a new DDoS botnet spreading on MicroTik routers. I heard that you've got some new information about attacks from the Maris botnet. Would you like to jump into that for us? Yeah, Tony. So um, I was actually pointed at a blog from Curator Labs uh, detailing a brand new botnet that they've discovered engaging in the largest DDoS attack to date um, against a, a Russian website, Yandex. Uh, Yandex is uh, probably as big as Google is here. Uh, but in Russia. So it's a major, uh, you know, information technology company uh, with lots of hosting infrastructure, and this is a botnet that basically attacked them. Um, so the researchers at uh, Curator, they published a couple of interesting things about this botnet. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, I think when the attack was first described, a lot of people thought that this could have been a variant of the Mirai botnet. Um, but the researchers at Curator Labs uh, were able to determine that it didn't quite seem to fit the profile that they're used to from Mirai. So they analyzed, I think, 56,000 participants in this botnet attack, and they were able to determine that they were um, all MicroTik devices. Um, MicroTik is a type of the, uh, routing device, um, and it's made by a Latvian company. And uh, so they said, you know what? How are we going to name this botnet? It's a, <laughs> it's a botnet made of devices from Latvia. And it sounds like Mirai, but it's not exactly Mirai. So they came up with the name Maris that sounds like Mirai and actually is the uh, Latvian word for plate. Uh, so that's uh, how they came up with the, with the attack. But what's interesting about the participants is that they all seem to have a SOX proxy on a specific port open worldwide to the internet. Um, and with the use of these devices, I think the adversary, whoever they were, was able to achieve something like 21.8 million requests per second um, as part of the DDoS, which is basically uh, a breaking record. Um, and even a few days later, uh, Krebs uh, security website described experiencing an attack that was also attributed uh, to the same thing. So it seems like the adversaries are expanding. Now, um, after looking at this write-up and kind of comparing notes, it actually sounds to me very similar to something that we covered on ThreatTrack just a few weeks ago uh, related to the Gloopteba random bot botnet. Um, if you guys recall, that botnet was a Windows-based botnet that was being used to distribute payloads targeting MicroTik devices. So the researchers at Curator Labs were kind of posing the question of, um, you know, how did all these MicroTik devices uh, get compromised? And I think based on uh, our analysis from a few weeks ago, it seems like uh, this Gloopteba botnet might be the way. Um, so it, it establishes a SOX proxy on port 5678 TCP. Uh, enables pretty much anyone in the world to take advantage of that. So it seems like, uh, uh, unfortunately, you know, adversaries um, are now using it um, in this very negative way. Um, so a new world-breaking uh, botnet out there, uh, record-setting. Sorry, record-setting botnet. Yeah. It's uh, pretty terrifying numbers that they put up there in that article. Um, Stan, I think they also talked about where these devices really are, that uh, there's an awful lot of them in the United States. They did mention that they're basically worldwide. And when we uh, uh, looked at the, uh, the MicroTik botnet and the MicroTik exploitation, I think you could see it's very similar results. It's basically a worldwide um, threat. Just wondering, is is Microtech has Microtech responded in any way or anything about how to patch or what they should do to uh, stop the infection? I think in this case, everyone. I, I believe these are routers that become inadvertently compromised, and I think Microtech on their website usually has good guidance about what to do, which is to apply the latest version of the firmware uh, to devices. But I think an important component is also to make sure that the 
management interfaces of your any router that you have or any appliance that you have, including Microtech, is not exposed to the internet in a way you don't anticipate, as well as it has a secure password. So a lot of these devices, like the Microtech devices, they you know just take a password, and sometimes administrators they get lazy and they pick something easy to guess or default. And unfortunately, it seems like um, the bad guys have capitalized on this and are using brute forcing as one of the top ways to compromise these devices. There are some exploits as well, um, but I would say um, equally bad is the easy to guess passwords um, that are out there on a lot of these devices. So what do we usually recommend? Again, this applies to Microsoft or any other type of appliance that you manage, is make sure that your management interface is not exposed on your WAN side of your device. It's not exposed on the internet, and it's something that you manage from inside your network or on the LAN side. If that's just not practical for you, just make sure you have that, um, you know, the good username and password. Uh, it's not a default, and make sure you're running uh, the latest version of the operating system for your device or appliance. Um, in case of Microtik, uh, just make sure you have the latest firmware version uh, that's possible for your device because there are some vulnerabilities that let the bad guys uh, figure out your username and password, even if it's secure and strong. So, Stan, um, one question from me. I was curious. Um, are you aware of, is there any information out there, are you aware of um, this botnet doing anything else uh, nefarious outside of Yandex and then Krebs? Um, I didn't know if they've, they've kept going, if they're attacking other things. I was just curious if, if you were aware of that. I think Curator Labs um, was mentioning a few different attacks they attributed to this botnet as well, a few recent DDoS attacks. I don't think they specified which ones. I think with Yandex and Krebs being so popular, I think it's just something that people will recognize uh, right away. But they did mention that other like financial companies and other um, types of um, basically people or websites um, have been impacted as well. Um, now that this is so publicly known, I don't see a reason why anyone would stop doing the attacks unless individual, uh, you know, owners of these devices really took action. And I think that's what it's going to require. You know, Microtik themselves probably doesn't have access to all these hundreds of thousands of devices. So it's really on each system administrator uh, to make sure that they take their device um, and, uh, you know, secure it. Um, and the best way to secure your Microtech device, again, uh, is making sure that you have the latest version of the operating system running, uh, that you, tr you know, as much as possible in your environment, don't expose the administrative interface uh, on the Internet side, um, and then also make sure you have a strong username and password combination. Now, not easy to guess. Yeah, I just have a feeling this is not going to be the last we've heard of this. This is just so big. Um, Unfortunately, I think not. And uh, I think another thing that makes this difficult is, um, uh, you know, it's basically any, like the way that the bad guys have deployed the, the exploit, it can allow almost anyone to take this um, over in an unexpected way, which is unfortunate. Um, yeah, I think unfortunately we might hear a few more cases in the coming weeks.